Grr, reading some Caffeine Rage, and I'm here to present a new game today. We're going to be taking a look at Betrayer by Black Powder Games. It's released in March of 2014, so a pretty recent title. It, it's an indie game that has a bit of an odd twist on things. It's an action adventure with a bit of survival and horror elements thrown in. It's an interesting one, so we're just going to go ahead and get started because there's a few things about the gameplay that is a bit different. And yes, I did a, do a little bit of playtesting on this, so we're going to be overriding that. And welcome to Betrayer. Yeah, not much in the opening intro, but you may be noticing something. First of all, I'm not going all artsy with the video. That's how things are. Actually, there's an option. If I could click on it properly. You go from Sin City, which has no color outside of red, which you can see on the chest right there, all the way up to Skyrim levels. But honestly, the it feels almost too bright. It, it's made to go into a black and white. If you've ever seen colorized movies, you'd realize that, I like it right there, by the way, you know, just a little hint of color, but not too much. You'd realize that to do the black and white properly, they have to color things kind of strangely. And that's why you see, like, yellow stoves and stuff in old movies that's been colorized. It's also kind of cool how they lose their color once you, or the chests lose their color whenever you click the loot out of them. So we'll get this one, some more coinage, and we continue on. And you may also notice, if you listen closely, yes, that's right, no music, or at least out here. I'm pretty sure that there's music later on, but. Or, you know, more sound effects, but right now it's just seagulls and the wind, which really kind of draws you in. It's an interesting choice to have it so that you have absolutely no music to set the mood. It's all the game's visuals, the atmosphere, or I should say the natural atmosphere of the game and not something dictated by the composer. So we'll get caught in something and continue on. And look, it's a little Red Riding Hood. You don't know who I am or why you've... I don't know who you are or why you've come here. But you should turn back lest you become trapped, trapped in this place as I am. So we have our first hint of an idea of what's going on. Well, not really a hint of idea of an idea, but we have a new person and an investigation. You also may notice that whenever we're in menus, outside of this menu, you know, the full pause screen, the game world is continuing on in the background. So it's kind of Dark Souls-esque in that. So we'll continue down the path and hit these chests. Should be, yeah, we have a shop right here. Or <laughs> what passes a shop here. Dear Sir or Madam, I have come into possession of a number of fine items of exceptional quality and an indisputable value. As a token of good faith, I offer you a free bow in hopes that you're serv you're, you may survive long enough to become a valued customer or a regular customer. Arrows will be free for a limited time as well. Beware that they sometimes deflect off armored enemies, so be sure to have so be sure to carry plenty and recover them when you can. 
I put my trust in your honor and to leave payment for whatever you, else you may choose to purchase. Respectively, John Howe, Merchant. So we now have a weapon. And we're full upon ammo, so we'll continue on. Yeah, they worked back on the honor system. Oh, and another note. We don't need to melee the note. Because your well-being is important to me, both financially and sentimentally, I feel that I should advise you that the enemies are easier to slay when you catch them unaware for their rage makes them stronger. Much like YouTubers and gamers in general, really. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't editorialize. I may reveal something about myself. Shots to the head also inflict a more grievous injury than those to the trunk or limbs. Please rely on me whenever you find yourself in need of deadly implements of warfare. Sincerely, John Howe, Merchant. So we'll continue down the path and a hint of red, and I actually know that this is a bad guy. So we'll try to sneak up on him. Try to catch him unaware. You can hear him grunting in the distance. Uh, a later note actually reveals that they get to actually hear in the wind gusts or will cover our trap or cover our footsteps. So I have played a little bit ahead so I know what I should be doing to try to mask myself. Ooh, that had to hurt. Yeah. Oh, a lot better than I handled them in my play test. So a crude pistol. And I get my arrow back. Along with a fork which is worth three coins. And another treasure chest with 26 coins in it. Doing fairly well. But more importantly, we have ourselves a firearm. Which is this... This is set in the 16th century, so firearms are pretty much a one-shot deal in combat. Unless you get a second one. <laughs> because reloading them takes long enough that you're really not going to get a second shot off most of the time. So we'll read this. The weapons you recover from slain, advers uh, slain adversaries are generally of poor quality, and bo being both feebler and more clumsy to employ than you may desire. Ugh. That was kind of a tongue twister. The weapons I offer are guaranteed to do more harm and do it faster. John Howe, Marchant. Wait, how did he know that we were going to get a... No, no, don't ask. Let's continue on. But it's kind of uh, striking how the lack of music actually kind of makes for a more immersive experience, you know? Music is such a huge part of modern gaming that the complete lack of it just feels weird. You're a Spaniard in the distance. And those are Spaniards, by the way. It was remiss of me to not to mention... The, the enemies are more likely to discover you if you're moving. Crouching makes makes it so you're significantly harder to detect and allows you to move quietly. Using the wind to your advantage, gust. Use the wind to your advantage. Gust will mask your footsteps, making it easier for you to run up behind f your foes without alerting them. John Howe, Merchant. Which was what I was trying to do before. Yes, I have figured out the... Crouch, by the way. Tomahawk, okay. So, since we know there's a Spaniard over here somewhere, get off the beaten path and take some cut. Oh, there he is. Use the rock to hide ourselves for now. Not sure what that bird is. Thankfully, you can't hear me talking like this. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be really screwed in trying to play stealth. So let's. Oh, there he is.
Ah, missed. I was just to the left of him, I think. Ah. And that's why the pistol is <laughs> very powerful. Unfortunately, I think we lose an arrow whenever we have an arrow to flex, so... Yeah, we're only going to get the one back that we shot over here somewhere. I could spot it. I'm not going to spend too long on it, though. I don't see it. Probably was destroyed. Sometimes the arrows aren't destroyed whenever they hit the ground. So it's good to at least take a look for them. But we're down to 14 arrows out of 16. Katie dead? Pretty sure that what, that's what that is. Anyway, we're coming up to the fort now. I played probably about an episode or two of this, so... I know what's coming up, at least for the time being. But I go... It, well... I didn't play too long, and, of course, you know, taking away the discovery element, at least for the early part, makes it so I can go through quickly. So, let's examine this. That's how we heal. We have a couple of chests back here that are very important. A charm of soldiery, which makes it so we reload slightly faster. Not a huge amount. It's probably not even very noticeable, but it's handy. Definitely want to upgrade that at some point, though. And this is our water skin. Basically a portable potion. So read this. According to our prisoner, the Spaniards seek to destroy settlements that might be used for, their, for privateering against their treasure fleets and will surely come, af come after us again. We need reinforcements if we are to repel the further attacks. So that explains why the Spaniards are here. Although the figure appears human, it appear it's only ash and ember. Yeah, that's not a good sign. And these, I can't, I've never been able to do, so that's something later. First things first. Oh, no, don't melee the store. Dear sir and madam, I hope the bow I gave you has been of, re of reasonable service, but I would encourage you to consider some more of my finer wares. I accept coin or barter as you see fit. Please check back from time to time to see what new items I may have acquired. Cordially, John Howe, Merchant. So, let's see what we have. These two, or these three, I should say, allow for more ammo. So, right now we can only carry, six, what is it, 16? Yeah, it's 16 arrows. This will allow up to 20. Uh, this nearly doubles our pistol load, if I recall correctly. health increase to be nice and also the four percent doesn't sound like a lot though Ugh. to be perfectly frank i haven't used the tomahawk yet i haven't needed to but here's our weapon choices for now a musket which has a moderate range it's slow to reload but has a lot lower chance to be deflected than these and it has a lot more damage to it oh look at that that's worth, what, a little over two of these, yeah. Or two common longbow shots. But once again, it takes a long time to load them, so better make that shot count. So, let's see, we have a couple more things to do here. First, we melee that. And melee this. Yeah, longbow arrow. And some more reading. The Indian King, who... Whom they call Winterice. I hope I'm pronouncing that close to correctly. 
was much pleased by our gifts of tools and trinkets and gave us in return abundance of corn and bear meat, which is excellent vitriol. So, another little clue about the bigger story here. There's going to be a, a long time that we have that I, well, I think I haven't actually gotten that far. That we don't really know what's going on. We're going to have to try to piece that together eventually. The bell is what we'll need to continue. And oh, another chest I nearly missed. Coins. Lovely. So that's all that's here, I think. Oh, no, we need the trowel. I really forgot about that. Okay, there we go. And we put that there and ring the bell. And suddenly we're in a hell spawn. Or it's just night. I you may notice that there's nothing ever here. But once we grab this, dug up what appears to be a human eye. Although it fears, feels more like stone, it is strangely heavy and warm in your hand. It seems to it seems that you could see things that you couldn't before. So now we have a guy over here. Uh, we can't hear what he's saying. Which leaves us with another item dug up a petrified ear like the eye you found it's heavy and warm seems you can now hear things that you can't before we go back over here now we can't talk to him even though we can hear what he's saying but it doesn't appear yet so we have one more item to grab well in the note the Lord Governor has determined that we cannot spare any men to send to Fort Henry, for we are being harried constantly by the naturals, who are who have recently grown more hostile towards us for unknown region, reasons. Ah. So another little bit of the story and another little mystery to solve eventually, hopefully. Another ash faker. Ooh. We can't get out of the fort because the door's closed, but maybe that's something that we'll eventually be doing. Nonetheless, we have another pile to open up. A petrified tongue. It, it too is warm and heavy. And also heavy and warm. It seems like you can now speak to those who you couldn't hear before. So that is all we have to go now. So we'll just go back over here and do some talking. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm just going to read this off. I'm not going to try to voice act it because I'm not a voice actor. Where's Martha? Who is Martha? Is I think the better question. His wife. Who are you? Captain William Eastgrove. Where did you see her last? On the hillside, we were sitting together. I was talking, I was holding her hand, talking about our son. I shall find her if I can. And whoa, Little Red Riding Hood's back. I hate to interrupt, but who were you talking to? I was speaking to the wraith named William Eastgrove. He appeared in the dark when I rang up the L and vanished when the daylight returned. <laughs> an odd thing to pick up uh, let's see two useful answers or a snarky one let's go with the snarky one I personally find the tongue more unsettling hope you don't look the ray although I confess that I'm suddenly curious to what one may taste like yeah, but you don't go licking strange wraiths right who are you though and of course you can't remember Do you remember anything? She's looking for her sister. Okay. Perhaps she's hiding from the Spaniards. They seem more like beasts than men.
Uh, why do I feel like she's mocking me? Like the darkness and the wraith? Okay, she's focused on her sister and it's not really going to help us. They're twins, so she should be easy to recognize. And also known as we're using the same model. Well, I'm calling a spade a spade here. And that's all we have to have, or that's all we have to talk to her about for now. So now we have a new uh, gameplay element, the ability to listen. I know it's not like Navi. Ugh, that would be terrible. I'm not sure if you could hear on the YouTube, but using the directional sound, you could tell that I have to head in that direction. And also, look at the compass whenever I hit, hit X. You'll see a couple boxes up here as I focus over that area. So that's where we're heading eventually. Or currently, I should say. But we have to be very careful because there's some bad guys on the loose. As always, this is considered a walking simulator, which uh, always feels like more of an insult than anything else. I just don't like the term walking simulator. Okay, we have one Spaniard there. And I have a feeling that there's others around. Let's just be careful. Oh, I see another one right there. I think that's too far a shot to really be able to reasonably hit. I'm going to have to try to come up on him. I hear another one. Maybe he's closer by. Even though I don't see him, which is troublesome. Let's see where we're heading. Oh, we're heading right past that Spaniard. Great. Let's see if we can... Oh, got a good hit on him. Ah, shot over him. And he dodged. There we go. Oh, that wasn't brilliant. Not a great run, but... Got a couple of our arrows back, at least. Still down a couple arrows, which... Isn't it great? We probably should restock before too long. I do see another one right there, though. Like I said before, <laughs> maybe it has to do with the angle that they hit the ground. So we're only down two. That should be fine. Just got to try to be careful, you know. We'll hit up here and then call it a day. I'm not sure if this is going to be a great series to do, though. Because there isn't a lot of stimulation. <laughs> it's a very slow-paced game. Let's see, that infernal storm spared our ships, but it's Captain Harper's common sense, or what scuttled Captain Harper's common sense, and that all that who supported him and continuing after the Rebecca and the Splendor turned back to England. We shall all of us pay for that folly in disproportionate measure unless we abandon this hopeless venture and sail away from here with all the provisions we can gather. You have to admit that they wrote a lot more fancy back in the 16th century. Because that would be considered a very formal letter now. Let's go up here and... Uh, at least get your water barrel. Which we don't really need to drink out of, but we'll drink anyway. We have a Spaniard down there, which will end things off by killing. I'm going to try to shoot for about 25, maybe 30 minutes on a longer episode. Let's 
Is the wind my advantage? And get in the shadow of the tree. I'm not sure how shadows really affect the stealth element. Okay, can I headshot him? Ah, bounced off his armor. And that finished him off. <laughs> yeah, a very cartoony sound on the armor deflection, isn't there? Uh, do see, I think I see the arrow over there. Under the tree. So we'll go ahead and do a quick, well, quick reload is very <sighs> kind of funny on that, but we'll wrap things up here. I'll escape out so nothing sneaks up on me while I'm uh, doing my little closing. So that's the end of the first episode of Betrayer. Whew. Kind of a slow paced game, but I think it's going to be an interesting one. I'm interested to see if you guys want me to continue playing this because this is going to be a kind of more subdued game than what I'm usually played. If you guys don't want to see this, well, I'll drop the series and pick up something different and continue playing on my own because I do think it's very interesting. So tell me what you think. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you again for more Betrayer next time. If you got us want to see it, that is.